Coliform turning may look intimidating, but it doesn't have to be. Starting with simpler projects and working your way up allows you to take it step by step and figure out what you're doing pretty quickly and easily. In this series, we're going to start simply making a goblet or scoop form. Then we'll move on to a shallow bowl with an undercut lip to develop your skills a little further. And finally, we'll create a vase, a true hollow form turning. Like most turning projects, the first step is to round out your blank. All of the outside work can be done with the standard turning tools you may already own. Personally, I really like the carbide insert tools, like those sold by Easy Wood Tools. They're very easy to use, and I can spend my time turning instead of trying to sharpen. The scoop starts with a blank mounted between centers on your lathe. But for hollow turning, the blank needs to be mounted in a jaw chuck. So one end needs to get turned to the proper diameter for the jaws you're going to be using. This part, the spigot as it's called, needs to be as large as practical to provide as much support as possible when you're turning. The inside faces of the jaws on the chuck that hold this piece are dovetailed. So you need to form the spigot with a matching dovetail to get as much surface contact as possible with the jaws of your chuck. Now the drive spur gets replaced with your jaw chuck. Note that the spigot that you just turned is shorter than the jaws themselves. You want the shoulder of your part to be resting on top of the jaws. Be sure that the jaws are as tight as possible. Once tightened, the blank should still turn true, but if it doesn't, take a minute and just clean it up before you get started on the hollowing. Reset the tool rest so that you can work on the end of your blank to start the hollowing process. Be cautious when working at the center. If you cross that center point, the wood is going to tend to lift your tool rather than pushing it down against the tool rest. This is really no different than bowl turning but we're going to make a very tiny little bowl and the turning is going to be quite deep. Again, you can use standard turning tools or the insert carbide tools that I prefer. This method is fine and will get you where you want to go, but if you have a drill chuck for your tailstock, you can save a lot of time by boring out most of the waste before you start using your turning tools. Lower the lathe speed down to about 600 RPM and slowly feed your Forstner bit into the material. Feed the bit into the part at a steady rate to prevent burning, and as you get deeper, back out pretty regularly to clear the chips. Once you reach the screw limit on your tailstock, back it out and move the entire tailstock forward and continue drilling until you reach the depth that you want. This project needs to be drilled out to about three and a half to four inches. Remove the tailstock completely when you're done. Now it's just a matter of expanding the walls of that hole to create your hollow form. You don't actually need specialized tools to create the scoop. The inside walls of this project are straight, so you don't need a specialized tool to reach inside the lip. Take your time, take light passes, and get used to the feel of the tool working well beyond the tool rest. It's a bit more difficult to maintain a steady hand as you're working well off the end of the tool rest. Notice how I added a piece of tape to the shank of my tool to let me know when I'm getting close to the bottom of my turning. As you get close to your final internal diameter, work slowly and take light cuts. Stop the lathe frequently, blow out the chips, and check your wall thickness to make sure you're not getting too thin. You can buy special calipers for measuring the inside wall thickness, but your fingers are a pretty accurate gauge once you get used to the process. And yes, it happens to all of us. Occasionally you're going to make a mistake and cut too deep. With the inside turning done, it's time to work on the outside. I'm using a tapered wooden plug that I made up earlier to support the end of my part as I turn the outside. Normally the chuck holds well enough, but this is a long piece and I'm going to turn a lot of material off the handle, so I want the extra support. This just helps protect the fragile walls that we just finished turning. Now we just need to turn the handle of the scoop using standard turning techniques that you would use on any spindle. 
Just remember to give yourself a good three quarters of an inch beyond the internal turning to provide enough support to the handle. If you wanted to make this into a goblet, you could simply turn the stem down the way you want and leave a good solid base on the bottom. But the handle of a scoop needs to be turned down more. Just keep working the handle down until you get it to a comfortable gripping diameter. A little bit of veining on the handle provides extra grip and makes it look more finished. Now finish up any detail work you want to do, and don't forget to sand it while it's still on the lathe. Sand just like you always would, working your way down through the grits, and using a buffing compound as the last step gives you a terrific finish. The final step in creating a scoop is to cut it along the center line using a bandsaw or a coping saw. But don't forget, as you reach the bottom of your hole, turn it out to create a scoop form. Then of course you'll need to sand the rough edges and clean it up, and add a little finish. And you'll end up with a scoop you can be proud of, for dog food, jelly beans, or anything else you might want to deal out in bulk. Turning a scoop is a fun project and a great way to get yourself started on turning hollow forms. Sign up for my email newsletter or subscribe to this YouTube channel so you can follow along and build your skills as we make a lipped bowl and create a true hollow form vase.